One, two, one, two. I go by the name of DJ Wood, and you're now listening to the original Jeek Podcast. Let's go. Ready to make an entrance, so backwards. Cut. What up, Jeeks? I am your host, the original Jeek, the one and only Rockin' Mr. Magic, and this is the original Jeek Podcast. Folks, I have to apologize for such an, an unexpected drought. We had such good momentum going. We had a fantastic lineup of guests. We had a fantastic live discussion on X-Men 97. I want to shout out to everybody who joined us on the stream and obviously a special shout out to my awesome guest my man g here who was a part of that panel and also shout out to liz gillum jewel spears and miss ivo jackson for a fun and enjoyable discussion on x-men 97 um if you enjoyed that folks please let us know because we would love to do more of those um it was a great time and I had the opportunity to connect some of my awesome people with each other that hadn't linked before. So connections being made, dope conversations being made. That's what we do here at G Nation. It's what we do. So it's still June at the time of recording. It's still June. So we still celebrating Father's Day. So happy Father's Day month to all you fathers out there listening in G Nation. We hope you had a fantastic day being honored by those who love you and honor you and respect you. And we give our respect and shout out to all of you, fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, adoptive fathers. If you're a spiritual father, you know, a mentor father type, if you're fathering somebody, you're molding and building lives. We honor you this month, this day, this episode. G. How was your Father's Day, brother? Next question. Um, uh, it was, uh, I had some, like, recent stuff uh, that happened, like, so I think without trying to bring the mood down, I just basically chilled by myself. I don't think I did anything. I was a little bit exhausted, too, so. Hey, there, there's nothing wrong with the gift of peace. And, my, and the thing about it is my kids and, you know, my stepkids and like kids that I mentored, like they all know I, I'm not really a big, you know, Father's Day person anyway. So, uh, they, but my kids, they know to like just let that man be, you know, let that yeah. man be. <laughs> so, but it was all love, man. Um, I just didn't really. That's what's do- up. And, and, and that's not, look, everybody celebrates the own way. Some people like to be big and extravagant. Some, some brothers just want some peace. <laughs> You know, some brothers just want a day of like, yeah, don't, I love you. Thank you for the well wishes. Now don't nag me the rest mm-hmm. of this day. <laughs> like, like, don't ask me for nothing. Um, you know, I appreciate the I love yous and that's, and that's cool. Um, I'm glad it was event, uneventful. I'm glad it was quiet for you. That's, that's enjoyable. Yeah. That's dope. All right. We're going to jump right into what are we PWC and what are we playing, watching, What are we creating? What are we doing out there? You out here making this circuit, man. You just putting in them. You traveling more than James Harden. You putting in them 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 frequent five miles, them Delta to Hong Kong direct type miles, man. You out here? Yeah, man. Um, You know, it's uh, they we call it convention season. It really picks up uh, in May through freaking September. Like we're honestly through October. And then it starts to relax mm. again in November. So die down. Yeah. Um, so I've been all over. Haven't had a chance. It's I'm, I I play um, I play the show, MLB the show. Okay. That's like my mental health game. 
It was just, I mean, even though I'd be cussing and, you know, being mad sometimes, <laughs> but uh, that's my chill out game. Um, I, dude, I've been playing, uh, what is it, Fight Night? Like, the old, oh, old, you going back. old one. Uh, we going back to Fight Night. I'm here yeah, for it. I mean, it. I play it. Um, I got it digitally. I can't remember who's on the cover. I don't think it's the one with Roy on the cover. It might be, though. But, yeah, it's very old. Um, I, that was like, uh, I think that was 2003. Well, they Wasn't had a few of them. Roy on the cover? Um, I'd have to check. I don't even But I, I play that a lot. Uh, also, it's a like a relaxation kind of game for me. Um I guess I can announce since we're getting ready to drop it soon. Uh, we, okay, we announcements. A, I'm here for a little bit of a Tuskegee Airs Fortnite experience that we're building. What? <laughs> so you can you'll be able to go in. We basically created a map. We have our characters, but they're like NPCs. They ain't doing nothing because uh, you know okay. you played Fortnite, right? You played it before. Yeah, I play. I, I play what my daughters asked me to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. I never played it. Uh, even when kids like my a bunch of my um basketball players were, were playing it and they would be like coach you should play with us i'm like if y'all like that game i'm probably not gonna like that because <laughs> 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 they're not really they weren't really gamers you know they played yeah they're casual they played yeah. 2k and Fortnite. that's it so yep. uh, that's the, the casual team plays a couple hot games that's yeah. it sports games and so i was like it yeah. can't be Sports and sports and shooters is what I call them. Sports and shooters. So, um, but yeah, we're really close. Um, close to launching the beta on that, and then we'll be making like the big announcements. Um, hopefully, like mid July. Um, I'm really excited because well, th- th- that's exciting. That's a that's a dope teaser. I'm honored to hear that teaser yeah. drop. I'm honored because that's dope. Like, I mean, weekly. One of the twins is trying to get me to play Fortnite with him. Like, now you got to play. Um, and I'm I'm no, really excited because I can finally unveil this theme song that we have. So um, one of my homeboys, who's like one of my favorite like rapper producer combos, I, yeah. he goes by the name of Willie Evans Jr. Um, he did the. So, you know, we're working on this animation that's taken forever. But he did, I asked him to do, like, a theme song. So he did a, he produced a beat for it, and he Mm. sent me that. And then he was like, I also, you know, did a little something. So he sent me one with vocals. And I was like, God, I mean, it's, you know how, like, sometimes you just know, like, this thing is hard as hell. So I can't wait to unveil that. We'll probably have the vocals in the trailer uh, okay. that we put online. So coming soon. Sure, I'm, hey, I'm I'm finna be on. I mean, if y'all are y'all gonna um, like are you, are you gonna, like YouTube premiere? Are you gonna live stream premiere? Like how we how we announcing this? So we're probably gonna be at a convention. So we won't do like a live stream premiere. Uh, okay. But it'll that you know that'll be the launch, and then when we get back, um, we'll have a couple of weeks to maybe set up some live streams and just do some fun stuff with it. That's what's up! Wow, um, that's congratulations on that. That's dope. That's dope. Shout out to the man Willie Evans for the for the beat, the lyrics, the whole nine. Because my man is geeked over yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for all for those who are listening, you know you can't see him, but my man is my man is cheesing ear to ear. He is he is hyped about this man. My man is cheesing. Um, that's what's up. I I you know I haven't had much time to be to be doing much or playing much. Um, between work and these kids, I have not had that much time. But I like I said to you before we went live online here, before we had record, I did just spend an hour at the basketball court. So I'm, um, you know, got some hooping in with with my daughter. She's one week she's serious about working on her game, the next week she's not, you know, <laughs> kids. Um, but whenever she wants to put the work in, I'm here for her to put the work in. So um did that. I've been um I I went through and committed to um Destiny Final Shape. I bought the 
DLCs. Like I, I bought all the other ones. I might as well just do it for this one. Um, which regrettably means I still have not pressed play on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but that is right around the cusp um, for me to to start playing. Um, I did beat, um, actually, this week, um, because it was on the uh, PS uh, Plus games, I downloaded and beat Streets of Rage 4 and had a blast mm-hmm. playing Streets of Rage 4. That was mm-hmm. fun. Um, it was the right mix of nostalgia and uh, and and current for a side scrolling beat 'em up. Pla- uh, side scrolling beat 'em up. It was yeah. fun. I liked it. Um, that was dope. And yeah. Uh, oh wait, what am I, what am I been watching? I'm watching. Um, I started watching the Acolyte. Um, I watched like the first two episodes. Um, I was a little pissed. At you know, at the very first scene, I was like, "Really, really, you gonna do that to me?" Um, but you know, eh, it's okay so far. I'm trying to avoid what the internet is saying mm-hmm. about it, or what the other podcasts are saying about it, till I catch up. Um, man, I haven't really had time to. Be, what else have I been watching? Oh, I've been I've been going back on on black sitcoms. Like I'm I've been watching. <laughs> Because like most 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 of the dope black sitcoms outside the Cosby Show, most of the black sitcoms are on Max. So I've been watching Living Single, mm-hmm. I've been watching Different World, um, I've been watching Martin. Um, I've just been I've just been black sitcom mm-hmm. happy. Yeah, <laughs> I have. Uh, so I I have this thing, man. Um, it's like I binge watch Scrubs, and then when Scrubs is over, I binge watch The Office. So like that's like year round it's not it's constant not like, rotation i shouldn't say binge watch because i'll have it on like when i'm playing in the, the background game world, you know what i'm saying but um yeah yeah i keep those cycling so i gotta admit i just finished scrubs and it's like you gotta do the whole thing so i don't know if you're familiar with scrubs but you know they had like you know it's, that's i i really haven't never watched scrubs like from i when they when it was out from my experience, either people like Scrubs and watch Scrubs for their, um, or they watch Psych and love Psych. I was on Team Psych. Okay, um, that was that was my show. Um, and the thing is, I, I like um, I like Donald Fazion, mm-hmm. but I just I just for some reason something about it was just like, eh, you know, I, I wasn't, I just didn't have a pull to 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 watch it. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, it's it's got a little it's it's corny in spaces. Um, but I just like the I like the writing, the directing, the way they incorporated music, um, the jokes, it, it, even though you had, you know, Donald Faison, who like really the only major black cast character. And then, you know, uh, Judy Reyes played his wife. So I don't know. She, I don't know. She's. Dominican or whatever, but she looked black to me. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, it was like there was like a balance. It was like black, like he wasn't the joke. He was, you know, p- telling the joke. It was like they they gave him like more ownership. I, I at a time at that time, I thought it was cool, even though he wasn't the main character, but he was like, mm-hmm. you know the main characters, best friend, hero, idol, like all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just like, like the humor, the style and there, there's serious. There's like two moments, uh, like that two things that happen in that, you know, in that whole series that are just like, mm-hmm. to me, they're like iconic television. And, Okay, well, don't spoil them for me. I, I, mean, I haven't I, said it. I should. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm put it out there now, just because I may watch it. I may it's watch a, it. It's, it's a it's a possibility. I, I think it's on um Peacock, Hulu, I think. It's on yeah. Peacock, okay. Um, Peacock. Which is cool because there was so they had I believe it was nine seasons, but after the eighth season, I think it moved. Like I think ABC picked it up. So the eighth season, it was mm. supposed to be over. They were on NBC, and then they got picked up by ABC for like it looked like a half a season before it got canceled. Um, but yeah, it was uh, 
It's a solid show. And if you're a fan, because I'm I'm super fan of The Office. Like, if you're a fan of and you've watched a lot of sitcoms and even some more serious shows, you can see like they mm-hmm. was taking a lot of stuff from Scrubs. Like Scrubs was innovating, man. So okay. uh, it's cool. Oh, I I'll, I'll have to. That's a high recommendation. I'll, I'll have. To, I'll have to give it a go. Yeah. I'll have to give it a watch. And then, um, man, I've just been watching, you know, NBA, now WNBA. <laughs> yeah, we're well, we going we gonna to talk about, we're going to talk about them finals. Oh, you want, well, you want, let, let's, I didn't put a segment in here for the WNBA. Um, let's, let's take a moment and talk about the WNBA. Um, for those listening, I'm going to put make this the Jig Nation official stance. Is when we talk about Caitlin Clark, it's going to be because we're talking about wow. basketball. Yeah. Period. Like, because on this show and anything Jig Nation related, when we talk ball, we talk ball. We've talked about Simone Augustus on this show. We've talked about Cheryl Miller on this show. We've talked about Cheryl Swoops, Cynthia Cooper. Like, if you're one of these new fans who are here just for Caitlin Clark because you think Caitlin Clark is the GOAT, we ain't the show for you. <laughs> we not. That's not what we're here for. We talk ball. So when we talk about Caitlin Clark, we're talking about it because of basketball. We don't care about nothing else. We talk in basketball. And newsflash, she's not the most noteworthy person to discuss when it comes to women's basketball. She's not. We've got face to facts. All these new fans, especially these people out on Twitter, getting their draws in a bunch because Caitlin Clark is not on the, the Olympic. Olympic team and this and that, or she took some hard fouls. You tell me you don't know basketball. You tell me you haven't watched the WNBA, and you tell me you really don't have any real desire to watch the NBA. You're just riding a wave, and you're gonna fall off, like most people do when it comes to fads. So, if you, with that out the way, Asia Wilson, man, best player in the world, and it's not close. Um, the Aces. Outside of the Liberty, I don't see anybody being able to check, play with the Ooh. Aces. This year, man, so um, Seattle, like, quiet as kept. Seattle built a freaking mega team. Like They've got a the nice squad. No, no. They brass. I just don't think, I don't think Seattle can take them in a series. I mean, I've watched when they play head up, like, but Chelsea wasn't there. So, that you got to, yeah. you know, the point guard ain't there. So, you got to, you know temper that but i think so minnesota is playing really really good basketball and it's an the entertaining really style to watch uh mm-hmm. they play a lot of five out which i usually hate but they're still attacking the paint um that that that's the thing they are attacking yeah, the basket and their five out is not just all right, perimeter and the fessa man she oh, the he's killing, killing people it. right now Fessa yeah. is, you like if Asia wasn't playing, actually, you know what? Even the way Asia's playing, Nafessa might walk away with the MVP this year. She has to be she considered. She all has in. to be considered. She has to be. She has to be top three. Yeah. Um, she got to be considered, man. Um, so, yeah, I think Minnesota and and just their style can just be troubling because, you know, it's such a, like an open, they're, they, they're spacing the court really well. They got shooters. They got. They've got great yeah. energy. They can wear a lot of teams down. Right. So um, I'm liking them. Who else? Uh, it seems like, like if Phoenix, you know, gets to the playoffs, they can cause problems because um, Kalia is a killer. And now they got BG back, so yeah. I'm not sure how how BG's 
endurance is going to be like BG ain't the same player. Well, yeah, she's, she's older. Did you, know. you see when? Um... But but DT but DT is older. But you know she still dropped what thirty something the other day that game or the week or two she ago. Hit like seven, seven three, three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. Like, I think she maybe she dropped forty. I don't know. DT is still she, being yeah. DT. And I think when Brittany gets her legs back, I know that game. It was so funny because I was arguing in this group I'm in because they was like, Brittany, you know, uh, Brittany Griner shouldn't make the Olympic team. I'm like, she's the best, you you know, U.S. center that we have. And then they were like, well, Asia's, Asia's uh, a center. I'm like, Asia's a four. She play, you know, she's, a she's four. starting at center. Yeah. Like, they're actually putting uh, Kia Stokes into the starting lineup now more. And yeah, but Asia's always been a four. She can... She's face four. up, you yeah. know, face you up from 18 feet, beat you off the dribble. She give it to you however you want it, you know. However she wants so, it. I mean, they're they're doing they're they're trying to classify her as a five, but just same way they try to classify Tim Duncan yeah. as a five. He's a four. Yeah. She's a four. But yeah, like, but that's... when they matched up, uh, Brittany was killing her in the post, like the, in the fourth quarter. They dumped the ball down like three or four times straight, and you're just too little. And I and yeah, you're just too and that, small. that's all it was. Asia's playing; she's playing smart defense. She's an excellent defender. I'm talking about moving her feet. Yeah. How she can that. Yeah, she she gets good she position. Doesn't, she doesn't let BG catch it yeah. in her in her comfort spot. She, just, she makes it fight for two it. But and turn that's around size and put you in the bucket. Yeah. Like she just. So I think she's too yeah, big. I think she'll be like once the game. You know, once you get to the playoffs and everything slows down, I think she'll she'll cause problems uh, like normal. But I just don't know if they have it. An- yeah, you just have to, you have to do what you generally do with BG. You have to get her in foul yeah. trouble. You got to take her off yep. the court. When you get her in foul trouble, things things get easier. And the crazy thing is, she's getting older now, so she ain't as jumpy. She ain't going for all that. You know, like the, she's the not going for that stuff. Yeah, I know. Like, she's staying on the ground, so. I don't know. I I think they can cause problems, but I think Minnesota and Seattle are teams because Skyler, like low key, Skyler came back like on Skyler's, a mission too. So well, Skyler is trying. Skyler is on a mission to prove that she ain't going. And nowhere. after that BS with Phoenix, like she got an extra yeah. chip. Um, I, I well because they they did her mm-hmm. wrong. They did her really wrong. So yeah, so yeah, Skyler's got a, She's on a mission. Um, the feast is on a mission. Chelsea, you know, she had her first game back. She's on a mission. Um, and the Liberty are looking good. The Liberty did um, what they should have done last year. You got to feature John Quell. Like I, I know yeah. we know. I like I. I always they they. they I, well, when you put the money into Stewie like that, and you've already got Sabrina, you know. You know how yeah. you know how that works, and I, and, but and, but but John but John Quell is the one who the offense should yeah, run through. She's the one that breaks can break the game, like because she posting, yeah. she's hitting threes like at a high clip. She just you know she that I call them like that that space eaters. Like in your lineup, it's you're gonna be hard pressed if you're giving her the rock. Last year, man, I'm telling you, I probably got at least twelve more grades. Cause I would just be screaming, "Give her the ball!" Like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> All these, <laughs> give her the ball, cause she gonna make the game easier for you. I still think Stewie is probably the second best player in the world, and I think that you know when Stewie gets it going, all bets are off. But right, play through this lady right here, and it's just gonna make the game easier for everybody. Same things happening with Indiana when they realized, okay. We got to get the ball, like put the ball in Aaliyah's hands, like feature Aaliyah, her. Aaliyah Boston should be the yeah. focus, like and, period. She's the best player on the team. She's the most consistent player on the and team. She's, she's Aaliyah Boston self, should be like the focus. she ain't out there playing for herself. She's out there playing for right. the team. So she's out there playing team right. ball. So she's not like, and you saw once they, because they, you know, of course the beginning they're like they put the ball in Caitlin's hands. Let's see what she's gonna do. She's gonna turn the ball over at a high clip. And, yep. see, you know, like her offense isn't the kind of offense that helps everybody else. Kelsey Mitchell is the best scorer on the team. 
like 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 oh, perimeter yeah. absolutely wise, bounce perimeter she, into yeah, the pin. She's, yeah, the, she's definitely the most balanced. Yeah, because she can do you know she can get it off the dribble. She can catch and shoot. She she can you know she got a midi. She you know what I'm saying. Whereas like Caitlin is either mm-hmm. three or layup. You know, she, I mean, you know, she's she's a she's a five tool yeah. scorer. Where where Caitlin, you know, like you said, laying the ball, but she's shooting a three. Mm-hmm. She you know where you know post game. Midi, Chelsea got a bag bag. Yeah, she got a full bag. Yeah. She, you know, she's she's pulling up off the dribble, off the off the cut, off the curl. She's she's got yeah. it. Um, she's a she is a five tool scorer without a doubt. So, Caitlin, Caitlin just Caitlin's to me, Caitlin's biggest problem is the tur- well is the turnovers. Um, and her below average defense, but you can be a star and, and an impactful star, you know, without the defense. But those turnovers are going to kill yeah. they, the fever. They, She's just yeah. such a high clip. And, and so many, like it's a lot of them turnover because you know you see the people online, and we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about ball. Shut up, Greg. Um, we told, yeah, yeah, I don't care about the yeah. people online because because they, they don't know because ninety ninety nine percent of them don't right. know what they're talking so about. So we see like she getting ripped a lot. She's like you know traveling. Oh yeah, she she making, it's 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 making and and it's not college no and, more. Right, it's the game is faster. These are grown ups. Everybody's strong. Everybody is athletic. So it's you know some of it's a process, but I think that I think for like where you'll probably get the most out of her is when you, when she's able to play off the ball and you might, you know, you might run her through some screens, some curls, like that kind of stuff. And like almost kind of like, I don't want to compare her to Steph because I don't think she's anything like. Well, she tries to play like Steph and everybody knows it's a part of, it's part of her appeal. I would I would actually disagree with you. I personally would prefer Caitlin to have the ball more, um, to than than to come off the ball a lot because I think her most dangerous shooting off, is off, off the, the dribble. dribble. Yeah, especially off that 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 left side step. Like those are those that's her money shot. I would really want the ball in her hands. I would want her to make better decisions. Um, stop trying to have all these passes be, you know, be fancy. You're not Jay, you're not, you're not magic. You're not Jay will. You're not Jason kid. I don't need the extra like flair here and there. It's fine. You know, we love, you know, you know me, I love flash, mm. but every, every, every pass should not yeah. be that, you know, but she's- sorry, you have two hands bounce past the ball into the post. It doesn't need to be some, you know, That's major spin, look pass yeah, every time. Is spinning and like, come on, this like, it, no, you're not the show. You're not. You're here to win. And, you're here to win basketball and, and I, games. So let's I, get the ball where it needs to be so we can win basketball. So games. I get you. I get you. I just like watching her game. Like she's gonna have to add a lot to her game to be able to be like a solid point, like full time point guard. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, and with that, because we saw I, that's what when we talk about people that haven't you know watched basketball. What is Sabrina? Like, she's, you know, Caitlyn Sr., you know? And before right. her, we had Kelsey. And it was the same thing. All of them had to make adjustments and get their body ready to play, you know, in the W. Absolutely. And all of them yeah. have had to take, like, a smaller role. Because remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, she, they had to reduce yeah. and adjust, especially, especially with yeah. Kelsey. You know, going to the aces, you had and and playing for Lambeer, she had to yeah. adjust. And and you know, Sabrina, and, and then and then under Becky, like you had to, you had to, like you're. I mean, even though Lambeer's not running the aces anymore, the um the the environment, the culture he set there mm-hmm. is still mm-hmm. there, and it's and, and it is and I, you know one of the part of the reasons why they're my current favorite WNBA team since the Detroit Shock don't exist anymore. Um, is that it's a very bad boy piston way of playing the game. Yeah. It is it is team first, reduce reduce mistakes, reduce yourself to fit within the team's goal so that we can win because winning is the but, goal. And at, and but at the we, same time, when it's when it's your time, they're it's going your to time. Feed, just like when Kelsey's hot, they're looking for 
They see and, her. Um, Jackie, what, Jackie had like 37 other night? Like, Jackie's hot. Let's get her to box. So it's like, but, but, but again, that's, but again, that's very, that's, that's, that's how the bad boys were. Because when Vinny's hot, <laughs> we give him the ball right. to Vinny. When Zeke is hot, he's got yeah. the ball. When Joe's yeah. hot, he's yeah. got the ball. When AD was hot, he's got the right. ball. Like, you know, and every every next 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 Hooper up, and I love I love watching them play, and they fit so well together. And there's pieces that you didn't think would fit well together. That between Lambeer and Chip Becky Hammond, and, and Becky Hammond deserves all the props for how well these women are playing together now. They 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 fit so well Dude, together. They have as, Alicia Clark coming off the bench, the bench, which is crazy. Hey, who I I love I love Alicia Clark. She was like I just love the energy. I I I, I oh, yeah, absolutely. She does whatever is necessary. Like if you need her to lock somebody yes. up, she she's their she's their Dennis yeah. Rodman. She's just gonna go out there and Except do whatever you need her to do. She knocked down threes. She can she go <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And I I love her and the fact that she's because she should be she could be starting at almost any team any you know? almost and any other team should be starting. The fact that Absolutely. she's embraced that role and she comes in the game, she loves her role and yes. gives you know puts her heart on the floor. I love it, man. They they and but I always tell people it starts with leadership. Your best player is a yep. jerk, then you know this is what you get. But when your best player is always breathing. Man, did you see what uh, Kate Martin? That um, it was like a post game conference, and uh, it was Kate Martin in Asia, and they were asking, they asked uh, Kate something, and then she just started talking about Asia, like she's the best leader that I've ever been around. She pours confidence into me, you know, like that's your that's the best player in the world, who's like you you you. I like Kate, and I hope she has a good career. Yeah, me too. But she's in that level of player where if she would have went to the wrong team, she probably wouldn't have made the team. You know what I'm saying? But, right. But, yeah. they, you know, they're bringing her in, and it's like they're pouring all this into her. Because it's a lot. And I, yeah. I don't say that in a bad way. You see how much talent. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's not bad at all because that that we've seen that play out through the yeah. NBA where – a player goes to the you know to the right system and they flourish. If they were in any other system, it likely wouldn't have worked out as well for them. Because you know, you, was that was that a Draymond Green I heard? Because I, because that I, I'll just flat out say it. And I love Dre Saginaw Pride. Stand up, but yeah, Draymond does not have the career that he has if he's in right. a different system. Absolutely, right. yeah. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna move to some quick hits, real quick here, before we go to the to the Celtics and to the bat into uh, our main topics: the Boston Celtics and the uh, and Bad Boys Four. Um, Quincy Wilson, have you seen Quincy Wilson? Uh, I saw the um, the recent race where he came in like sixth or something. Yeah, this 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 kid is breaking track and yeah. field. I'm sorry, this. If y'all listening haven't seen Quincy Wilson, he's 16 years old, and he is running 400 meters dash in 46 seconds or less, which is insanity for a 16 year old. I when I ran track, elementary school, middle school time frame, just out before high school, I was glad when I had. A fifty-seven second, <laughs> four hundred meters. Yeah. This kid, and this, and it's, and he's he's not running against kids. He's at the Olympic trials, running against grown men, blazing past some of these grown yeah. men. Like he may not make the the Olympic squad, but he is putting track and field on yes. notice. Because in another four years, when he's twenty, and he's and he still won't be fully grown even at 20. He'll still have some development. But at 20, I can't imagine what this kid's going to be like at 20. He is breaking track right now. Yeah. Um, the only thing, like, I, I, I want to – I hope that he doesn't feel, like, too much pressure. So, Because I think about Arian Knight um, was mm. very similar. And he's still good. But, you know, you like uh, Noah Lyles is in his prime right now. So it's like you're yes. gonna be getting a lot of number twos and threes <laughs> for a minute. 
But I just, you know, I hope that, you know, because we've seen it. We saw, like, the, the, what the pressure did with Shakari, and luckily she yeah. bounced back. So I just hope that um, that pressure, like, they don't put too much on him too young because, like, that, like, for him to even, like, like I don't think people understand how hard it is to even be on the track for, like, uh, at, at the Olympic trials. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't Especially as a sixteen-year-old, yeah. like as an and, 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 year old, <laughs> yeah, for real, yeah, as, 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 yeah, but 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 yeah, like people, yeah, most people don't understand. And if you're, for you listening, like we're not talking down no, on you. It's just, um, just as as former athletes, um, we we have a a really deep understanding of what it takes to be at a to play at a mid high level. To be at Olympic peak level, that's best in the world level. You know, it is to be that the work, the dedication, the uh, God given ability, like what it takes to be there is insane. And then to be that age and like the the one time that um, really blew me away when he set the meet record, when he ran a 45, 13. Like, come on. <laughs> I would I couldn't have dreamed of running a 45 13. Nah, nah. I couldn't have, I couldn't even I would I if I had dreamt that I'd have woke up and said, ha, yeah, right. <laughs> like, Look, on. maybe on the uh, Nintendo power pad put those numbers. Right. <laughs> yeah, for real. I mean, I'd sit there and I'd have been and I wouldn't have been using my feet. It'd have been on cheating using my hands. <laughs> <laughs> like come on man yeah no that's just it's it's amazing but I, I i echo your sentiment i really hope that he stays focused and thanks i mean in that way think you know track is not as big as some of the other sports mm. so um hopefully you know he keeps a good a good level head and keeps training and you know we'll see what he's like in four yeah. years um next quick hit uh for those gamers who remember, um, I remember because I was working um, for EB Games at the time, The Thing, based off the movie, there was a video game for it. And now it's going to be remastered uh, again. <laughs> and they dropped a trailer for it. Have you seen this I trailer? Have not. Okay, well, I'm going to encourage you and all the listeners to, to watch the trailer. And I'll put the, put the link in the show notes. Um, I'm going to... If you haven't seen this trailer, this tra- this trailer looks amazing. One, watch the movie. The movie's yeah, amazing. the movie, and it holds up the, like for a nice. Degree. It holds up to this day. Yes, Keith David. Um, uh, no, it's not Kurt Russell. Um, it is. <coughs> now I'm now I'm drawing a blank on it. Um. It's not Jeff Bridges. What is his name? He's, uh, um, he's Kurt Russell adjacent. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm thinking Kurt Russell. No, it was Kurt Russell. It, I'm stupid. Yeah, yeah it okay, is Kurt okay. Russell. I yeah. had to. Yeah, Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell, uh, Keith David, um, Wilford Brimley, uh, Wilford Brimley. Uh, fantastic cast. A really, really great cast, and a one of the best um, monster movies you'll you'll ever yeah. watch. Absolutely fantastic. Watch the movie. Watch the trailer for the game. Um, and if you dig it, get the game. What not to do, however, when it comes to games. Uh, if you've been watching the news or reading your, you know, reading your news or looking at the uh, USA Today app on your iPad or <laughs> Apple News, you may have seen an alert that stuck out. Uh, New Jersey man flew to Florida to attack a fellow gamer. Now, on the day that we were recording this, um, which is the 27th of June, there's a game called uh, Arcscape, and they are shutting down their servers today because of uh, declining, massively declining uh, users playing of the game. Um, sorry, Arc Age. Apologize, Arc Age. Um, they're losing to MMO. So it's a massively multiplayer online role playing game, MMORPG. And they've been losing just tons and tons of players. So they are, uh, you can't access it as of today. Um, but prior to that, 
apparently this young man from New Jersey, who will go unnamed because everything is still alleged and pending, so we're not going to name this person, but you can find his name on the internet. You can, you can click yourself if you really want to know his name and see his picture. However, this young man had beef, um, and he decided to tell his moms that he was going to go visit some friends in Florida, hopped on a plane, broke into these persons. Hold on. He went and he bought a, and, he went and bought a hammer and a flashlight. Well, oh, sorry. He bought a, he, he bought a <laughs> hammer. <laughs> he bought a hammer, snuck into this person's house who also lives at home with their parents and attacks him. <laughs> And this person, the and the victim is screaming for help, whose father had to come and and, and rescue him uh, in the house. Um, this is crazy. this is wild. Man. This, is, this is crazy. You don't really you expect this to be a Florida man story. No, this is a New Jersey man story. So New Jersey, y'all need to get a grip <laughs> on your peoples. Look at that shoe, Jersey. Look at that shawl, because my man. I mean, I know some of y'all got money in Jersey, but my, my man took a flight to Florida because he had big fade, man. <laughs> like, look, some people, look, if you online talking smack, and look, especially if you play Call of Duty, you play any any shooter, especially Call of Duty, people like they run their mouth. Battlefield, people like to run their mouth. Cats on 2K love to run their mouth. If somebody says they're going to run the fade with you and you challenge them, I recommend not doing that because they might hop a plane. They might come into your house with a hammer just to see you. Especially if you leave the and door. If you don't live, especially if the door. You know. <laughs> like you talking greasy and you ain't even locking your door, son. Like where are they making these people at? Hey, this twenty twenty four. It ain't that safe <laughs> outside, y'all. It ain't. My man went and bought a hammer and a flashlight and hid in their house. <laughs> Until the right time, I just my man went stealth mode. He went, he went. Um, what's snake. the old boy's name from? Um, yeah, no, not even Style Snake. He went. Um, Sam, what's what's Sam's last name from? Uh, um, from uh, the um, it's not Siphon Filter. It's the other one. Um, the uh, oh my god, it was on Xbox. Ah oh, man, what is his? It was a, it was a Tom Clancy Splinter Splinter oh, okay. Cell, like Sam from Splinter Cell. My man went Splinter Cell level and sneaking into this man's house with a hammer and a flashlight, and he went he wanted look he was like Archage is dying and you are gonna have to die too because I just we wonder, gonna run this I, hammer. I saw they, they asked him. Why would he attack the guy? And he said he's a bad person or something like that. So I wonder, because you know how the the no that, that no that is what he said. He he allegedly told deputies the victim is a bad person online. Mm-hmm. So it just so this. But I mean, to me, I mean, I guess you could get it. But how do you get this dude's information? Like unless you know him to an extent, right? Well, my thought is. And here's in here, and then again, and listeners, preface this I'm not defending this in any way, shape, form, or fashion now. However, I really believe that this dude wanted to run the fade and probably said, Come find me. This is where oh, I live. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you know, you people have done that. Mm-hmm. He was like, Yo, come see me. Or said, This is my name. And when you tell somebody your, your, your real name, IRL, out there like that, they can find right. you. Especially if they know what state you're in. Even if you have a super common name, they know what state you're in. They can find you. You ain't going to be that hard to find. You on the grid. They're going to find you. And my man, again, that's why that's why I said he was Splinter Cell this. Entry through the unlocked door. All black. Gloves, mask, hammer. Come on, man. That's, that's, that's Splinter Cell all the way. Stealth. My man, shh, he was, he wasn't playing, and uh, the the victim uh, sustained uh, severe but not life threatening wounds. Yeah. Thankfully, 
He has been released from the hospital, but he did sustain some severe head wounds. And for those listening, I apologize. I'm babysitting um, my eldest daughter's dog, who decided just you know to take this moment to also agree with don't run the fade with people that talk smack online. Just don't right. do it because because they may show up in all black with a hammer. Just just don't do it. Uh, leave them Jersey cats alone. We thought them Florida cats were crazy, but these Jersey cats will hop on a plane for you. And how damaging is this to the RPG? You know, oh no, they don't care. They don't care. They shut down today. They don't care. They live with their parents. Like, (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah, yeah. This doesn't make the gamer, the gamer boy uh, trope any better. Two, two, two grown men living at their parents' house, um, playing playing MMORPGs. (laughs) That are about to sh- still playing when they know the thing was about right. to shut down because this only happened a few days ago. They're still playing faithfully. <laughs> We're gonna play this oh, thing yeah. till it dies, so it or one of us yeah. dies first. They probably the last two people raiding against each other. <laughs> it's gone, it's, be- it's beefing. <laughs> I'm, I'm a rage old fortress. This thing's gonna stop. I'm a rage old fortress before I done. <laughs> Oh, okay, speaking of why do things happen in life, to a less violent why, um, reports are there's going to be a Spaceballs 2 starring Josh Gad. And that just elicits the question out of me personally. Why? I I I, I have I have nothing. I just have why. I don't I don't know what your thoughts are. That's why it's a so, quick hit because I honestly have nothing for why we would make a spaceballs too. So spaceballs is one of my favorite things that was ever created. It's one of my those comfort movies for me. Like when I used to lie and tell people I wasn't gonna be able to come in to work today. Uh, <laughs> 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 like I'm sick or whatever, and then I would you know just be on the couch. Watching Spaceballs or The Godfather or The Princess Bride, like I, I have certain comfort movies, and so I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I know you know from the business standpoint why they do these things, but um, there has been a lot of time if they try to just take it and go somewhere else with it, they might you you know. Let's be honest, uh, Star Wars is giving. Uh, giving I thought, um, Star Wars has been Spaceballs <laughs> to right. itself already with this you know, this sequel yeah. sequel so trilogy. They've given a lot of you know? you know new material. So if they make it something different, it, I just don't. It, it when I say different, I mean like don't try to recreate that movie. Just go from there. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, but right. I'm not excited about it. No, I mean, what, I mean, I, I guess if you really wanted to continue that route, there are plenty of movies within the genre you can poke fun at. But let's keep it a buck. This ain't the '80s no more. Right. You can't, you can't make those jokes right. anymore. It's this. A lot of that stuff is. I mean, it's Mel Brooks we're talking about. And if you don't know Mel Brooks's work. Blazing Saddles, Spaceballs, History of the uh, World, Men, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. It's not PC, y'all. And, and, you know, and a lot of people will be offended. Um, there's a lot of there. There will be anti-black, white, anti-Jew jokes, anti-everybody <laughs> stuff. Um, and, and, and Mel Brooks is Jewish, and he be t- making all the yeah. Jewish jokes. So you know, don't don't think it's like anybody's being singled out here. But like, can um, you still have the Schwartz? It, like, no, you, you, you know like, what I'm like, 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 there are so many jokes you just can't make anymore, unless you are, and especially if you think this thing is coming out in theaters. Now, if it's like a Netflix movie, you might be able where then you could possibly go that route. And again, Star Wars has given us plenty of stuff to make fun of. Um, we've got Prometheus and other alien properties because that was referenced in there. Um, you can you can take shots. You can dig, they can take shots at Avatar, um, the the, the Avatar yeah. movies if they want to go there. I mean, there's material to to glean from, but I just you're not going to be able to recreate that same vibe unless you're gonna unless you're gonna warn everybody that hey, this is going to be completely irreverent. It's going to be offensive, and if you can't take that, do not press play. 
you know, because that's 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 the the environment that you're going to have to let people know, like, this is not going to be a family friendly movie. It's not going to be a, a sensibility friendly movie. If you don't like people getting made fun of uh, to the point where it is fighting words to the point where you want to hop on a plane and dress in all black and grab a hammer, <laughs> um, you may not want to watch this movie. And I jo- and Josh Gad to me, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to figure out where Josh Gad would even, what he, I, I don't even know what he'd play. Yeah. I'm guessing he'd be the, uh, the parody version of, um, uh, well, I mean, what, what would he be parodying? Just- um, I mean, if, if, if we're basing it mostly off of Star Wars, again, it'd have to be Kylo Ren. I would assume it'd have to be a parody version of Kylo Ren. But I, some things just don't need to happen. I agree. Dude. I agree. <sighs> All right. Something I, something I am glad that's happening. Last quick hit here. Denzel Washington and Spike Lee are reuniting for a film called High and Low, which will be a thriller that's been picked up by Apple Original Films. How hyped are you to see the reuniting of Denzel and Spike Lee? So I was already on this thing where I'm going to rewatch Ted Lasso, and then I was going to, you know, unsubscribe. (laughs) But now I got to, like, stay on, man, because, yeah, I got to see this. Just I mean, like, I have this thing where if Denzel is in a movie, I'm watching it. Uh, oh so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I I don't. Spike hasn't, you know, he's had some stinkers. Um, well, you know, everybody has, yeah. even Spielberg and Scorsese. Everybody's got bad stuff. So you know? it's not art if you don't if you don't make bad right. stuff. So you know, um, I I I think I saw like one uh, trailer about it. Or like a commercial or something, something I saw. Okay, but I'm not. It was a mention of it. I know it says that Ice Spice is in it. Yeah, that part I'm not excited about. I don't. I just don't see potential as an actress in her. But hopefully, she surprises me, and I'm wrong. She's not good at acting like a rapper. Okay, okay, true. So how you but act like that doesn't so... mean she can't act in other ways. Yes, we'll see. I don't think R.B. Graham is, is great at acting as a rapper, but, you know, <laughs> other people did. They did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> do, 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 do. But they not like us. <laughs> so I say it's going to be produced by A24. Uh, yes, it's good. It's a, it's a joint production with A24. So that makes me feel a little bit better because I, I like movies... I like that uh, Civil War movie. A lot of people were like mad at it or whatever, but I didn't watch. I it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm, but, okay, well, that, that, I might have to give it a watch. But I will um, say, you know, like I I like different forms of storytelling. I don't think everything has to be, you know, the way they teach you. There's the five elements to storytelling. And the yeah, five elements. Good. Um. So no, I I enjoyed it, but. I like I've had some people like I can't believe you like that movie, and like I start hiding my address online because because <laughs> they may show up all hammer. black flashlights and, and hammers. But yeah, I, I I like they they do different stuff, and I like that man, especially in today's age where it's like everything is you know cookie cutter and recycled yeah, and so. Okay. All right, let's talk about the mutually hated Boston Celtics. For those listening and aren't familiar with Greg or myself's personal fandoms, um, well, if you're listening to this show, you should know because I talk about it all the time. I'm a hardcore Detroit Pistons fan. Some reasons. <laughs> I'm a Pistons fan. Um, always have been, always will be. Uh, I hate Boston. Uh, and, that's a Detroit, and I'm not just a Detroit Pistons fan, I'm a Detroit fan. So I'm a Pistons fan, I'm a Tigers fan, I'm a Red Wings fan, I'm a Lions fan. And if you know your sports history, you know that the Pistons and the Celtics had a lot of battles. You know that the Detroit Tigers used to be part of the AL East, and we had a whole lot of battles with the vaunted Red Sox. 
you know that the Boston Bruins and the Detroit Red Wings are both original six NHL teams and we hate each other. I hate Boston. Hate it. Passionately. I hate everything except for their New England clam chowder. That's the only good thing out of Boston. Okay. Marky Mark sucks. Um, everything else there sucks. Okay. I hate Boston. Um, but if, unfortunately, and, and to preface, Greg is a Lakers fan. I don't think I need to uh, elucidate further on the Lakers for and the relationship. 43 years, 44 years. But here's my thing, and I have to say this. And when I said this to my dad, he looked at me like, like with shame. So Jalen Brown, uh, yes. we, there's this little park that I used to coach at, kind of a legend over there. Uh, North the Cab Chargers is who they are called. Jalen used to play there when he was a uh, itty bitty, and I never, what? I didn't kept coach him because he was younger. I did coach uh, one of his cousins. Um, okay, when he got a little bit older, but I've been watching and being a fan of this boy since he was, you know, six, seven years old. So my, it's, I, it's like. It was so hard because I can't like, I, and this I've had some years to come to terms with this. Like when I got a root for that kid, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I gotta, you no, know, beat my chest and brag. And I've been telling people for years how like he's so much like when, um, what's his name? Brad Stevens got him and tried to make mm-hmm. him like a three and D guy. I'm like, no, 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 That's not no. What he is. Um, so I hated Brad Stevens for years. Still not sure if I like him. Um, but that's okay. That's at fair. this point. And then like JT is a Kobe guy. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was really bad because Drew Holiday is like one of my favorite play. Like I used to, I love Drew. when it's time to sit down and talk defense, I'm bringing these boys in. To we're talking, we're talking, yeah. Drew we're talking Drew Holiday. You know, I'm, ta- I'm ta- I got my players sitting in my living room. And we're watching how he moves his feet, how he, you know, anticipates, like, all that stuff. So, and then Al Horford, even though I'm not a Hawks fan, I've been living in Atlanta for 25 years. I've been to, I've seen, probably seen Al play live 100 times. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, it was so hard for me to hate that team. It was really hard for me to <laughs> hate the players. I can still hate the right. second no, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get it because I, I, as a Pistons fan, I felt that way about, you know, about your Lakers when, you know, Kobe was doing his post Shaq mm-hmm. run because they had a ton of players who I loved. Like, I, I, you know, I was a Kobe fan when he was in high school, you know, when he was at mm-hmm. Lower Marion. Um, you know, I was a fan of Gasol. I was a fan of, you know, our, a fan of our test. I, I've always thought that Trevor Reza was an undervalued and Definitely. underappreciated player. Um, you know, Derek Fisher, I, I always liked Derek Fisher as a player, as a person, you know, we realized Derek Fisher, unfortunately, he ain't, he ain't nothing, (laughs) but as a player, you know, uh, I've I've always liked Derek Fisher. Um, so like when those, when the Lakers, when the Lakers were playing, the Lakers were winning, they beat Orlando. I was like, I don't want to be happy for the Lakers, but I like these players. Um, and it's, you know, and I feel, I mean, that's how I feel about Mike. Like, I acknowledge what Mike is. He's a bull. He's still the enemy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's still, it's, it's, you know, on the court, it's still screw Mike, but I'm not an idiot. Right. I, I have to, like, why? I, I know what greatness looks like. I have to appreciate it. Um, and I have to appreciate Boston. Like, they were the best team all year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was, and then the other part, like, overcoming, so, when Ime went down last year and then, you know, um, Missoula took over and I feel, I feel like all of them were put in like bad spots. And so for oh, them absolutely. to come back and Drew, Drew, is, Drew took them from like, okay, this is a really good team to damn, there ain't nothing we can do. You know, <laughs> I think – well, I, I, don't, I don't understand how they allowed, how they made that happen. Because Well, remember, uh, so Milwaukee traded him to Portland. For to Portland, yeah. And it was yeah. understood the whole time he wasn't going to stay in Portland. 
Yeah, we knew so, he wasn't going to stay. I just, I just don't, I just don't understand how it, it, no other team didn't see and, that. Like, like jump hey, in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, jump in, try to. Yeah, I just, if I'm another team, Drew Holiday is the is the point guard. I don't want a contender having their shot again. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't because when they traded away Marcus Marcus Smart, I was like, okay, I understand offensively why you want to move away from Marcus. But defensively, you need – he's your defensive anchor. You need somebody for that. And then when they got Drew, I was like, oh, snap, okay. Yeah, because in my opinion, he's – and I like Marcus Smart, don't get me wrong, but I don't I don't think – He's no – he's not, not Drew Holiday. Not, not even just on the defensive end, he's not. Like – Yeah, like I know he got that DPOI, yeah. but – And – And then I don't think he did – I don't think he was not deserving yeah. of it. But, but you saw the difference. But he's not Drew yeah, Holiday. Like, this dude locks down. Like, he locks down one through three. Like, he can pick you up, pick you up full court and make my, you choke the ball feet, up. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's just a different dude. It's just. He's, yeah, he's not, a, he's, not a, he's not a stat sheet defender. Yeah. He is a traditional position, anticipation, sliding the feet. Getting in front of you, mm-hmm. cutting off your angles yeah. of attack. He is a quintessential. T- and, and and so listening, this is why Greg has his players watch him because this is a text. He's a textbook, textbook defender, man. textbook defensive, especially from the point guard position on the perimeter. It, it really don't get much better than. And Drew he Holland. can. And, and some- he like it, especially with a lot of these weak, you know, fours. And even some fives, mm-hmm. like he'll even because he gets that low center of gravity, like yeah, yeah he's got he's, the leverage. I say this, and a, couple, a few people look at me crazy. He's, I'm talking Michael Cooper, Joe Dumars, like, I, like he's oh, yeah. on. The, yeah, I put him. I, I put him in that level Definitely too. Absolutely, that level of defense. And when you consider what he is as an offensive player, and I, I was saying before this year. To me, he's a Hall of Famer, but I he doesn't have the accolades. But yeah, that's, but, but that that's my point. Like that's, that's the problem. He doesn't have if the you accolades. Ask, like these dudes, like I saw um, Pat Bev say, you know, like Drew the best, you know, and Pat Bev loves to beat his chest, but he's like, yeah, he does. You, if you're talking like just straight like real textbook defense, nobody better than Drew, and there hasn't been anybody better than Drew since. You know, for like the last ten years. Since, 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 yeah, oh yeah, he's he's been the best defensive point guard um, for at least ten of his fifteen years yeah. in the league. I think, or 14 I years think Clay league. had. You could put Clay in there before the injuries. Um, and I see. But I, he, I, 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 I he wasn't as versatile as a defender, but I'm saying like I'm just say, speaking from like the. Textbook, you know what I'm saying? Body placement. Okay, I see what you're saying. Being in the right spots. Yes. Like, you, you... Well, Clay is a super fundamental yeah, player. you right? couldn't just... The, the, he doesn't have the athleticism. If he wasn't as fundamentally sound, you know, he may not be right, the right, right. player. So he's... Yeah, and so, I, I mean, I just look... When I when we talk, you know, you talk textbook defense. Ooh, that's a spider. Uh, textbook defense... <laughs> And I'm trying to decide do I want to kill him or not. Well, um, don't let it bite you because you may not. You're probably not going to get no yeah, power. You know what? The last spider that bit me proved that. So I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy because, you know, we're in Georgia. So it's all these woods and stuff. So it's like mm-hmm. usually you don't want to kill spiders because they kill no, a lot of other things. things that might sneak into the house. Um, but yeah, he had to go. But yeah, um, so anyways, the Celtics. Did we, were, did you like what? What was your predictions for the series? We didn't get to talk about it. Oh my 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 prediction. I was I I called. Um, my prediction was Boston in six. Mm. Um, I I did not think Dallas really had a legitimate chance. I thought Dallas got. Very fortunate matchup wise, um, which you know that happens, and you know, I, I mean, I, I just 
and not that and some people are like, oh, Dallas shouldn't, you know, they they shouldn't even be there. I was like, look, don't act like Dallas isn't a like, good team. Mm. Two years ago, they are in the conference right. finals. Like, don't act like they're not a good team. Like, like let's not get it twisted. Um, but I did not think they had a chance. Primarily, and here's the thing. I've gotten heat because of how I talk about the fact that Luka Doncic really doesn't impress me um, outside of, you know, the fact that he can score. Um, I I don't like how ball dominant he mm-hmm. is. And people who know me know I really don't respect one-way players. It's a two-way game. If you're a two-way player, I automatically rank other players higher than yep. you if you don't play defense. All the warts on Luka Doncic's game that I've been talking about throughout his career – were on uh, full uh, display. Yeah. And you can't play that way and win championships. Nope. You can't be lying on the floor after complaining to a ref, your team goes down on defense, comes back on <laughs> offense, and you're still on the floor. Like, you can't be a traffic cone. You've got to put some type of defensive effort in aside from just watching passing lanes and trying to pick off, like, oh, people, oh, he led in steals. Yeah, because he watches passing lanes. He doesn't play any defense. He's a traffic Because everybody else cone. is, like, on the team. Because everybody else is trying to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's he's a traffic cone. He's extremely ball dominant. Um, and one thing I'll have to say, other people mentioned, and I didn't want to really bring it up because um, there have been other Husky players, and I don't, I don't watch him enough to really comment on his conditioning, and I wanted to, to reach out. Uh, to to my man who covers the Dallas area, you know, um, former guest of the show, multiple time guest of the show, my man Chris Henderson, aka C Hendo. I wanted to ask him about Lucas conditioning because you know he's interviewed the man, he sees, he covers the Mavericks consistently. Um, is his conditioning really that big of a problem? Clearly, we've seen his conditioning is a problem. So he's over. So I I speak I I gotta speak on that because. While I do understand that, I feel like when we start talking about the conditioning, we missed the part that you mentioned a second ago. So I was looking at the numbers, and um, I think they said his utilization was around 34% during the regular season. Oh, it, it went it, it hold on, hold on. So it dropped in the West, like the you know the first three rounds of the playoffs. It dropped to like 31. Right, it went down. And then the finals and finals and it's 39. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was crazy high. It's always because me and my boy, we we argue about LeBron all the time. And I was mentioning it like, I don't buy that uh, the conditioning thing when I clearly see you going balls to the wall on offense and then resting on defense. Like we were taught, Mm -hmm. you know. By the grades, I can tell we were taught the same thing, right? If you are, if you're tired on the basketball court, you rest on offense. On defense, yeah. you you don't rest. And yeah. so you're seeing, you know, James Harden was doing it in Houston. LeBron and yeah. LeBron's older, so you could say he's older. But uh, you still, but, but, he, but, like, he, but he, even in, even when he went back to Cleveland, he was yeah, still yeah. doing it. And so it's like you know, if you're saving all your energy, you're making a conscious choice to provide, you know, to provide energy to the things that are going to make you look good, right? Right. Because it's the NBA, and I say it all the time. It, if if you, if you, like, when they talk about, oh, these guys need help, all that kind of stuff, all these dudes can play, man. You have to. Yes, you're in the NBA. Yeah, everybody you Remember when Stacey Ogden came into the league and they, they wanted to make him a, an offensive player and came to the Hawks? And they was like, ah, oh, we're going to – and they gave him – and he was scoring, you know. He he was averaging right, like 18 right, a game right. or something like that. He was – right. he was balling. But, we, but, his, you know, he wasn't really that great of an offensive player. But, no, no, I mean, yeah, that wasn't it, his but, you game. You know, compared to NBA players, I should say. So – Right. Like, that's, that's why they ended up bringing Smitty in because they were like, okay, this guy's right. really not a score. We got to get a guy exactly, who's really a score. but you have to – like, if you give these guys chances to play and to make plays – like we saw PJ Washington, who I felt like he was the one. Like if they were able to, if he was able to get off, then it, it would have created a different problem for the Celtics. Because now, well, it would have created a different problem for the Celtics if uh, if Tim Hardaway Jr. Oh, could have hey, bought a bucket. Wait, now, because what the hell? How, was that how does about? the third leading score? 
third leading score on this team did what he didn't score to what but game he was five? Not getting the play. Like if you're yeah. used to you're but, used but, to like you're the third best player on the team, and before Kyrie got there, you was the second best player on the team. You're used to playing, being able to get into a rhythm. He's a shooter. You got to get shots. Yep. Like you getting DMPs. Like I was like, what? Like I still don't understand what that is because. Well, one of my keys for the series was Joe Mazzulla cannot let himself get out coached by Jason Kidd, and I don't know what Jason Kidd was doing this series. Well, I, I, I was shocked. As, as so, being a coach, and I always preface I never coached at that level. I coached AAU. I coached some really good players, but I never coached you know the NBA or anything. But it's the same kind of thing, man. Like when you, if you have like your best player, and, and you've probably seen this playing. Like, you have guys that just drain you, and they drain everybody, right? And if I can't, as a coach, I can't say, hey, Matt, I know you got 40, but you got 13 blow-bys tonight. That shit can't – I'm sorry. Are we allowed to cut that? Yeah, okay. That shit can't happen anymore. Like, step in – you know, there was the whole thing. Like, if if you can't stop the guy, you can at least ride him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Ride him into the next defender, or <laughs> you you don't you don't see that happening at all no, in the NBA. It's just anymore. like if a guy if a guy gets half a step on over. you, they're stepping off. Nobody over. rides anybody's hip yeah. anymore, or it's steering them into the next defender. Like nobody, I, right. I don't get it. And you saw, like, honestly, what was it? Uh, game three, where where he fouled out, like making stupid fouls. To me, it's like you're quitting. So I I've been in situations. Because I, I used to, like, evaluate players, and that was part of it. Like, when we're deciding who's going to play on my team, um, I'm, like, looking at body language. Body language is huge to me. Uh, I'm looking, mm-hmm. like, are you accountable? You know, you throw a bad pass, you say, my bad, or do you be like, man, you got to catch that? You know, like, all that right. stuff. And so when you have players like that, and we saw he basically ran Rick Carlisle out of town. You know what I'm saying? True. That's a, the only coach that won a championship for your organization. And he, he ran yeah. him out. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's like. But, but you know, but like you know, I mean, there, the, there's no loyalty toward, towards coaches in the NBA, and there hasn't been right. for a while. You know, it's a player's driven league. So, you know, Cuban was going to pick the player right. over, over the coach. So even I don't though, know what all Jason can, you know, like some of the stuff still. I don't know why Junior wasn't playing. I know he got he uh, sprained his ankle in the OK series, a OKC series, I think it was. Um, yeah, but it didn't look yeah, severe, and he missed a couple of games. But then, well, well now, but now he went out. His yeah. dad commented on on IG that you know that they went out. Same thing with Jalen Brunson. It, it was different, but it's the same. You know? Yeah, yeah. That, that's and. And you know, we, we saw how Brunson played all season and, and into the playoffs, and you know, you can't you any 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 Lucas stand can't be like, oh, he didn't have he didn't yeah. have any help. I'm sorry, he's had Jalen Brunson, Kyrie Irving, he had Porzingis, who was out there playing on one leg and probably against doctors' mm-hmm. recommendations. You can't say that they didn't have no help now. Right. Can't say that. Now, now Kyrie's games in Boston, he just acted like he couldn't play. I don't know if it's because he wasn't allowed to sage the court before the game, or I don't know what his problem was. I, but I he was he was struggling. Who, PJ PJ looked like a completely different player than he was in Charlotte. He's been playing extremely yeah, well. And then, um, but like you said, if he would have been able to really get off, it would have been a big difference maker. But I just didn't understand how Tim wasn't getting the rock and getting the chance to get into a shooting rhythm because you need his, you need his bucket. Uh, yeah. He stretches. And you the can't tell me it's he, it's because of defense, because if that's the case, then why is Luca on the court? <laughs> Like, yeah, because yeah, then Luca yeah, would never be on the court. Saying, you can't tell me. And, and, and the difference is it's not like Tim doesn't make a defensive effort. Right. Tim tries to play good defense. He gets burnt because he, he jumps too much and he tries to over anticipate and he'll get burned that way, but he's making yeah. a defensive effort. He always has. But just imagine if you got him on he, the court. Because, man, there was, there was one play, and I'll probably butcher it, but. It was like Drew was switching, and he switched on to uh, – he was supposed to switch on to um, Derek Jones, but Kyrie was cutting through, 
And so Drew just went along with Kyrie, and I think JT was on him. So it was like they double teamed Kyrie off the ball, and it's like Derrick Jones, man, you can shoot that all day, dog. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I, I ahead, like Derek, that kid. That. He's really improved his, you know, his, you know, his jump shot and everything. Well, he's improved but, a lot. The fact that he's yeah, still in the league, but yeah. no, you got to hit ten of them to beat us tonight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he's unfortunately for Dallas, Derek Jones the third is not going to hit the and shots you need. Based off of U- Luca's utilization, he ain't gonna get ten of them. Because even if no. he hits a couple, it's like you ain't gonna just keep feeding them. Because I gotta get my own game off. I gotta get you know. Right. I gotta. And, you know, these so many of these modern stars are so ball dominant. It just, I don't know. Did you did you see what did you see John Sally on uh, on Gilbert's show talking about how you know the fact that LeBron wasn't the system player? Mm-hmm. I, I've I've been saying that for years, um, and and it's not just a LeBron thing. It is a a modern player thing. These guys, everybody wants to be the system instead of playing within a system. And I think LeBron and other players would have won more championships if they allowed themselves to play within a system instead of having everything run through them. Um, it's just and, – and Mike is the best example of it because when everything went through Mike, you could they can only get so right. far. But when he submitted himself, reduced himself to play within a system, that took the ball out of his hands a whole lot more. As, you know, you remember yeah. Mike's utilization back yeah. in, the, in the 80s? It was it, like Mike constantly right. had the rock and in his hand. Was, they called him a ball thought, hog in the he was media. Because he, had the, he was dominating the ball and then still playing like defense like a pin Still playing and good defense, the, yeah. The I mean, come on. Was, like, my dad was like, can't, no man can keep that up. Now, he, you, no human can keep that up for a career. Like, he's going to have to give something up, you know? And, um, like, even more recent, you can go to Steph. Like, like if you look yeah. at Steph with Mark Jackson, which I loved it, I ain't going to lie, because he was oh, letting it, it fly. And it was yeah. all about him, and y'all can get some when I'm not, you know? And then, you know, <laughs> Steve Kerr, who's already seen what happened with Jordan, already seen what happened with yeah. Kobe, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> we're going to, you know, and that took them over the hump. And I, I, I always say this, and I know we've talked about, you know, 2011, but me as a coach, and I, I ain't saying Spo didn't try to do this. I'm pretty sure he's a better coach than me, maybe just a little. But, uh, <laughs> like, when you're playing bad offensively, but you're still by far, the greatest athlete on the court. All right, man, go ahead and lock Dirk up. Cause I saw, right. I watched Steven Jackson lock him up. So you bigger yeah. than Steven Jackson. Yeah, you're stronger, you're bigger, faster, you're strong, like everything. You're probably quicker. quicker everything. Yeah, like everything. everything. <laughs> we saw, we saw what, and then we, and you and Jack had a great point about that when he was talking recently, but we saw what Jack did. When, and people forget, like, everyone talks about Baron Davis on that Golden State team and understandably so, but Jack was the best player on that Golden State team. Jack is so underrated. But yes. he didn't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he ever played for stats. Um, he just went no. out there trying no, to win. He played to win. He yeah. wanted to win. And, um, yeah. So, nah, but yeah, like, my whole thing is because I always look at it like, you know, you, when you talk about great coaches, how great would Pat Riley have been if Magic and Kareem didn't buy in? How great would Phil Jackson have been if Jordan didn't buy in? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, like, Phil, you can look at the Shaq and Kobe, like, the triangle that goes against both of our strengths. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to do this. Absolutely. You know? Um, so like, and you can, you know, you can, go, you can look, you know, you can go back like the Pistons, if they don't buy into Chuck Daly and, you know, oh, yeah, he's and it's, well, cause before people, cause a lot of people forget, like they talk about the defense, but most of those people weren't watching yeah, all when the offense. Pistons were putting up 140, yeah. all Kelly offense, Trapuka. you know, with a Zeke, <laughs> Trapuka, um, John Long, like people don't realize how they many was, buckets John yeah, Long yeah, could yeah. get. 
you know, like they had, and Kelly could fill it up. Kelly could fill it up. So like, they don't remember when, like, and I, I tell people the time I'm like, you know, who do you think has the highest points in a game in any NBA game? Like what team do you think it is? And they'll, they'll go to like, you know, the Lakers or somebody like that. I'm like, no, it's the Pistons. I'm like, huh? The defensive team. I'm like, there was before, a time, yeah, before Chuck, where they were put, where they were chucking up the ball, like don't get it twisted now. And Lambeer was chucking yep. it up there with yep. them, like they could put the ball in the basket. But like you said, if they didn't buy in, if Zeke didn't reduce his or scoring, Joe didn't reduce his, if they didn't acquiesce and go for the team goal, it, it doesn't happen. And I, I really think that Luca needs that i think um i think a great example of it working right now um and i get on him because of his lack of his defensive um you know um problems but Jokic is a fantastic example of playing a player who could be getting all the stats having everything run through him but he plays within the system um and it, it has benefited him to i think the third mvp he doesn't he didn't deserve but uh, to me, that's Shy's award, but um, he's yielded fantastic benefits individually and as an NBA mm-hmm. champion. He's playing within that. Look system. at Jason Tatum. Like Jay, yeah. he was training with Kobe in the off season, and then you get in the game. It's like I got to show you. You know, I got to expose y'all to this bag I got. And I, like right. I was so proud of him because up until well that game five. He he wasn't worried about the stats. You know what I'm saying? He was like doing. He was making the right play. If you're gonna game plan, game plan, and you know, double up on me, I got guys all around me that can make plays too. So yeah, because because ultimately, like to 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 make another Pistons reference, but nobody diminishes Isaiah Thomas for not getting the Finals MVP in '89. Right. Because everybody knows how important he was. Everybody knows how well he played. But Joe had – Joe was mm-hmm. hot. And they were like, let's keep giving right. the ball to Joe. All four games, Joe was killing it. We going to give the ball to Joe. And that's the a- – Zeke got, Z got it the next mm-hmm. year. But – you 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 know if you're gonna if you're gonna focus on me and keep me because you remember what I did to y'all Ooh. in '88. Okay, y'all go Ooh. y'all go focus on well, me here. Man almost, my man that Joe man almost converted me. <laughs> my dad, look, I'm, I, like look man, he, I look look look. look his... You you Laker fans keep running keep keep rolling off of that original <laughs> phantom foul. That is the know most. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Cap, Cap that original fatal foul, foul that robbed us of our championship with Zeke. Come on, like how to me, like I, I you know if you know, for the conspiracy theorists, if the NBA is writing a script, there is no better script than a man on one leg, on one ankle, who scores twenty five in one quarter, yeah. forty three for the game, and that win seals and wins in the championship. How you rob them of that is beyond it was me. A, it was a um, foul, man. <laughs> what the foul? Like dirty, it like, it should have been flagrant. Yeah, yeah. He definitely <laughs> didn't touch that man. Every camera angle shows he didn't touch that man. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my about. god! Speak, if, speak. If, if, Lakers. if somebody was... called a foul, uh, I believe. Uh-huh. It. Yeah, tell that. Tell that to Tim Donahue. <laughs> Speaking of your mm. Lakers, I, I can't. Mm. I cannot briefly, briefly touch Oof. on this subject, even though I I can't like talking about him, so I don't mm. like him. But I have to talk about it because it's newsworthy and it is involving your Lakers. One, why in the world are they hiring J- do they hire JJ Reddick? Oh, okay. So um LeBron undermined Darvin Ham. I don't care what anybody says. I watched the games. No, I, uh, I completely agree with that. I'm not just talking about at the end of the season. I'm talking about throughout. Um he, he throughout. does this. It's like if you're trying to do Darvin Ham said hey, we want to cut down on your minutes so you'll be stronger in the um, fourth quarters of games. That happened for like a week, and then LeBron was back to doing his thing. Uh, he took him off the ball. It's like we want to get D'Lo like some of these other guys, like keep them in the flow of the game. And I don't know if you remember, they were they were mic'd up, and LeBron was like, I can play the point too after like a week. So, mm-hmm. The thing about it, and I, you've seen this with great players, so I'm not trying to make him like 
an no, outline. but the, it, it's a, it's it's different when he's done it to him. He did it to Blatt. He did it to like, Vogel. This ain't, he, this ain't he did it to Vogel. He did it to Spo. We tried, tried to get, to get Spo run out of Miami. Yeah. Uh, like this is uh, he he did it to Paul Silas yeah. in Cleveland. This is not the first victim of of right. LeBron as a and for coach. You know, and not to beat a dead horse, but it's partly why. I think he has so many L's in the finals because he doesn't buy in. He thinks he knows or he understands more than what the coach does. So Darvin Ham wasn't allowed to coach. So when you see all the people talking about, oh, man, he just sits there with his hands in his pocket. Right, because his hands are tied. I can't, you know, I can't pull this guy out the game even though he's not playing any defense. He'll, he'll try to yep. put himself back in. All that to say, he, I think LeBron hired, you know, somebody who he thinks is going to be the the puppet that he needs. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. is because like, anybody with any sense knows that JJ is not going to coach right. LeBron. And, and he's not going to coach him in anything. And if I'm being honest, I like that um, that bubble championship. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that was LeBron and Rondo coached that team. I think Vogel, Vogel yeah. was just kind of there. You know what I'm saying? There. But I think LeBron. Rondo was so big for that for that champion, and all because somehow he remembered how to shoot. Um, well, you know, you know feet. the difference between shooting in well, a stadium yeah, yeah, I mean, versus shooting in a gym. Yeah, I know. It's, like, and yeah, all, every because he was he couldn't so miss in the gym. Every NBA player, almost every NBA player, if you put them in a gym, you know, we we have every you, ball player shoots better in the out. gym than yeah. in the arena. So yeah. The arena is, is so so different to shoot it. But I, I just think um, that him and LeBron was the ones that was coaching. And I think that Rondo, because Rondo is not going to go along. He's like, yeah, now I see you, but AD got 40. We're going to go give it to him, you know? So yeah. I think. But it's a difference. I think, like, because when outside of the, the clash with Carlisle in, 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 uh, in Dallas, Rondo isn't like anti coach. So, like most coaches he's played for, Love him. trust him yep. enough to make those calls because that's what you want your point guard to do. Your point guard is a coach mm-hmm. on the floor. So, if anybody's going to countermand the coach, it should be the mm-hmm. point guard. It should be that guy. You know, Chauncey did it. You know, Zeke did it. Like all the great point guards have said, you know what? This, this really ain't, this really ain't working. Let's, let's adjust here. And if there, that trust is there, cool. But when the coach is gone every two years because you've never established that trust relationship, you know, Braun just doesn't have it. And he knows JJ's not going to counterman a single thing he says. Everything he says and does, you know, JJ thinks is the greatest thing that's, that's ever happened. And, and, so, and, and you know, LeBron can air ball, and JJ's going to be like, you know what? LeBron had a fantastic air ball today, and um, we're going to build off of that. And, yeah. uh, we're gonna go talk about that on the and, podcast. After and the, the thing game. about it, dude, like if if JJ goes into it like that, he'll probably be fired in two years. Um, and it, it's a like I think it's a. I'm not the biggest JJ Redneck. I mean Reddick fan, um, <laughs> but I, I feel like it's a terrible job for any first time coach. It's a terrible job for any coach. Um, the expectations are high. You're going to get all the blame. As soon, we saw it, right? Last last year, all the blame was Russell Westbrook. Well, the year before, it's all right. Russell Westbrook You're... and Vogel. So they get Vogel out of there. They bring Ham in. Ham fixes Russ. Got Russ coming off the right. bench. Russ is hooping. He's filling in. He's starting when LeBron's out or whatever. But fixes it. You know, he's a good locker room guy, all that stuff. And then they move. Russ, and so now it's like, oh, now they started blaming AD for everything. AD comes out this right. year and is a first team All NBA guy, so you can't say anything about you know blaming him for nothing. He plays what 70, 76 games, I think. You know, so that. it's like, okay, we can't blame him, so now we're blaming him. And this is what, right. like, I remember years ago, KD talked about that toxic environment. Mm-hmm playing with LeBron, whether it's LeBron's fault or not, his fans in the and his fans in the media, they're always going to be looking to blame somebody else. Anybody but right. him. So, yep. uh, and unfortunately, he feeds into that. So it, like, he's, At the he's very least, he problem. doesn't douse it. You know what I'm no, saying? No, he doesn't douse Do it remember, in the, at remember all. Remember when Scotty was getting all that shit from not, uh, you know, from when he refused to go in the game 
and throw the chair yeah. and all that stuff. And then when Jordan got yeah. back, Jordan was on a campaign, him and Phil Jackson, like, no, man, this – like, remember Jordan said, this is Scotty's team. I'm just glad to be back playing on his team. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's like you, that's what real leaders do, even though they knew Scotty did some cool <laughs> shit. You know? But it's like LeBron, he just be quiet, man. Your homeboy, Shannon exactly. and all of them, be talk, like what they did with Russell Westbrook, man, I, it's like I can't respect I can't respect you. As a man, you don't want no, that, that wasn't him that there. wasn't okay at all. And now you got your yeah, boys. exactly. You campaigned for him. <laughs> yeah, now you got your boys, your boys in the media, you know, trashing him daily, and you ain't saying nothing. No, that which was was completely wrong. Yeah. So, anyways, right. the Lakers. Um, I do like this connect kid that they drafted last night. Um, but I don't know. I, we'll see early on because. The minute rotations that LeBron and AD have been playing, they've been doing those same those rotations through two two different coaches now. So, right, it's not, nothing. <laughs> nothing is new, and nothing. Right, changed. so Absolutely. we'll yeah. see. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. Well, <clears throat> that is going to complete our show today. I have unfortunately a. Um, uh, yeah, a prior engagement I totally forgot about. Oh, no. Like pick, like picking up my child. So, um, <laughs> real quick, so so la- so real quick, we're not gonna re- we're not gonna deep dive bad boys. Um, we're just gonna end. Uh, just give me your ranking on bad boys four one through five. First of all, I call it Reggie and them. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with that. Uh, I'm with that. And um, I, I mean, I give it like a. Are you talking about on the bad boy scale or am I on the Greg scale? On the Greg uh, scale. I give it like a three and a half, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's, I think it was my, maybe my second favorite, second or third bad boys favorite. I'd have to, I, okay. I, I'd have to go back and watch it. Well, 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 okay. Well, well, we'll have to go deeper into that. <laughs> um, I, I also give it a three. Um, I, I put it number three uh, on the, um, um, of the in order, uh, two is my favorite. Then, then one, then four, then three. Um, and you're right; it should be called Reggie and M because Reggie had the best scene. Um, and if they make a fifth one, they better have Reggie in it. Um, they need a spinoff. I do have to Reggie say, and Armando. Reggie spinoff, absolutely. Reggie, Armando, and um, um, go ahead and put in um, what's his name, uh, Bjorn <laughs> from Viper. No, no, they don't. They don't need that. What they need is to bring back Martin's boys who disappeared after the second movie. <laughs> Where's his sons at? They ain't here no more. They gone. Okay, that's true. All right, so we are signing off. Thank you for listening to the Original Jig Podcast. I am your host, Rocky Mister Magic. He is my recurring guest, wonderful creator, Greg Burnham. Um, you can find us online. Greg's info will be in the show notes. His links to his stuff. You can listen to this show YouTube. Apple Podcasts, Google, um, actually not Google because that's all now YouTube, but Spotify, um, all the Google, all the uh, podcast apps out there. But if you can't find us, hit me up on gnation at gmail.com or on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll be glad to do what we can to make sure you can listen to the show on your app of choice. Until next time, thank you for listening. Peace. Peace. Ready to make an entrance, so back with uh, Come on, clap for me. Oh, yeah. Whoa, slow down. Uh, 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 Whoa, speed up. This is DJ What, and you're listening to the original Jeek. Podcast.